What's up ladies and gents and welcome back to our little trucking series. I have released the first episode by now and actually the second as well. And that means we have a name for it. But I'm not sure we're going to keep that because it was kind of a makeshift name. Just so that I can release it. Oh. Getting a feel for it again. Okay, um, the first two episodes were pretty fun to record and well, I didn't expect much turnout from it, so we'll see where it leads. Anyway, I decided to continue this series because it's a good platform to just talk about some things I might want to talk about or just give opinions on certain things. And yeah, I like that. It's pretty good. So today what I want to talk about is two topics. The first is games as an art form. And the second topic is one I already forgot. <laughs> so let's talk about games as an art form first. Maybe I think of the second one. Oh yeah, recency bias. That's the second topic I had in mind. So let's start with games as an art form, of what that means to me, what it constitutes. Um, you're kind of blocking my way there. Alright, um, what does that mean to me uh, and, and how did I come up with that idea? Well, I came up with that idea because I've been playing Spider-Man recently. I think I mentioned that in an earlier video. Can we squeeze through there? We have just driven around that and back on here. Oh well. So I've been playing Spider-Man recently. Again, I already mentioned that in an earlier video. I think in the first episode, possibly even in the second. And first off, shortly about the game. I did enjoy it a lot, but it was very short. Even when you do all the side questing, it was super short. So that was a bit disappointing. They might as well have just released that as a DLC at a lower price tag because it's a full price game. It's, it really doesn't offer that much content. That being said, what, why did Matt make me think about games as an art form? Well, I think games in the modern culture and art are, I mean, we talk about music as art, we talk about drawings as art, we, to a certain extent, talk about acting and movies as art forms. So why not games? Why is that left out of us so often? Because obviously games do belong in that discussion. And then you often see the story-rich games. Take your Last of Us or Life is Strange, for example, as games which are touted as true art. And that made me think, aren't all games in a way art? And then someone came to me and said, well, that's nonsense. Like, look at American Truck Simulator or your Truck Simulator. The entire simulator genre, that's not art, that's not creative. And I said, okay, you got a point there. And a while later, I thought, no, that's not a point. Recreating reality is also a kind of art. If someone draws a picture of something he sees outside, that's recreating reality. 
would you then say that's not art? Or would you say that's a good drawing? Of course that's art. So a good recreation of reality, in my opinion, also qualifies as art, even though the, the creative input is lower as nature reality already gives you the creative background for it. But that doesn't mean that it isn't art. And if you think that means it isn't art, then you should also disqualify paintings of real things. As that's then also just a copy of reality and doesn't have a creative input of something fictional. But even then you have a lot of fictional games. I mean, Spider-Man again is an example. And if the comic constitutes as art in the broader sense, then the game about it obviously should also be considered in that conversation. But once again, we usually only talk about the story-rich pieces, which contain considerable genius writing as true art because apparently we view the writing in games as the art piece and the rest just as programming and I can see the argument but in my opinion that's not true because that would mean someone drawing a picture the drawing itself would just be what programming is to games, the putting it into practice, whereas the idea is the art. And then once again, I feel like proper drawing makes it art as well. Like even if the emphasis isn't a good idea or anything, if it's, if it's executed perfectly, then that's great art. And that brought me to Spider-Man and if you follow the thought, especially God of War, because you can think of the storytelling in those games what you want. I mean, the God of War story isn't particularly great or amazing or innovative or anything. It's basically an excuse for you to murder a bunch of creatures and I mean I'll gladly take that excuse but you know what I mean so we're driving pretty tame so far must change that <laughs> my point about this whole thing is the art in those games is the gameplay the thing that makes the game brilliant and everyone who has played God of War or a fighting game or Spider-Man or whatever it is in, in, in that, even shooters to, to a certain extent, everyone who has played those things knows that great gameplay is its own piece of art. Yeah, I knew that was coming, okay. And if you play that and you get the combos right and the dodging hit combos and using of special abilities and if you just interchange all that and it gets right and you're in the flow of things, you know what I'm talking about when I say this gameplay is a piece of art in how it was executed. And that is something that I always dislike about the discussion about games is that story rich games are hyped to no end for being story rich and for being great pieces of art and that games such as God of War are treated as something that's a lot more idiotic and simple and I don't see it that way because I don't think those games are simple 
they might not challenge you in the same spiritual sense as some of the other games do that really want to tackle you with their story and make you think but they instead focus on the actual fun and gameplay part and I don't think that should be discredited because I think that's what a game should be about I think the art form of the game should be turning something simple as a fight into something so sophisticated and that's just if that's brilliantly done then that's a piece of art in itself like watching the motions etc have you seen a modern art picture where it's just chaos and you can't really make any sense of it if that counts as art then the movement and fluid motions and just the flow of a well executed gameplay and combat and whatever it might be deserves its own place and its merit as a piece of art because whoever created that was certainly creative for one because it's not as simple as you dodge and you hit there are a lot of mechanics in play and a lot of things that go, go from one attack into a combo into another combo into a dodging motion that then sets off another sort of motion and it's just when this is done properly this should be lauded just as well as a well-written story because it's just as much of an achievement to get right as a good story and that's something that, that always bothers me is when the discussion purely focuses on the story rich things and those being celebrated as great pieces of work and the games that really get the gameplay down to a T they are just kind of forgotten in that, in that discussion and you can be of a different opinion obviously if you say well I don't think a greatly executed gameplay that might feel like art to you I don't, I don't feel like that's art and if that's your opinion then I mean great I'm, I'm not trying to say you're wrong that's what opinions are about facts are right or wrong but opinions they can differ and I think here we are in something that constitutes an opinion more than a fact I don't think anyone can really final or more make a final argument that says okay this is art or this is not art I think the, the word while it means something I think the meaning oh, isn't as clearly defined as some of you might want to think I mean you will find people that say okay music isn't art books aren't art only drawings are art as per definition this and that but I think the word art has long transcended only drawings I think it is in its modern day usage and meaning evolved into something that includes all sorts of creativity and creative output and in my opinion that includes games and that includes all sorts of games because creative output and creativity are not only the story but also how you implement gameplay features do we have to go off here? yes uh oh we are a bit fast so let me know what you think I mean this obviously like I said is lots of opinion and not much truly verifiable because I actually did read it up and you find so many different um, meanings of the word art and so many different people have their own kind of input on that 
And I just think it's one of those not clearly defined words, but in my opinion, modern usage of the word art really includes everything that points into that kind of creative output and creativity requiring sort of activity and oh. we overshot that a bit. <laughs> I sometimes forget that this is not a race car like what I'm used to playing with. Oh well. So I think that pretty much sums up my first point about games, in my opinion, counting as art throughout the spectrum, even down to the simulators. And now you might say, okay, but there, there's no creative creative output. But again, this is the, the one point that, that I can understand if you say, okay, um, If you want to put it down to everything re requiring creative input or everything having a, a creativity name attached to it or tag attached to it, then the simulators fall out. And then probably also the, the drawings of reality fall out because there is no, no real creativity attached to it. But In my opinion, I, I would include those as well, although I wouldn't say American Truck Simulator is a piece of art. But I would still include it in the whole games are art and therefore this game is also art kind of thing because drawings are art and drawings of reality obviously are also art. Even though they do lack that creative input type deal, but in my opinion that's more like the exception to prove the rule rather than something to question the whole kind of concept behind what I perceive as art. So obviously opinions were, were can vary and that's an argument that I have heard a lot and it's a fine argument I'm not going to dispute that and it's one that if you want to make uh, I mean I myself just made it for you so I'll let that count if you are of a different opinion where then I can see where you're coming from but there is still something that makes me include it in there and that's just kind of a, the value of replicating reality and the, the kind of act of replicating reality is just... There's something in there that still makes me want to consider it as art because even though you don't have a, creativity thing or fictional things you still have some kind of I don't know how to how to how to phrase that I'm not sure there is a, a word for that like even in German which is my, my main language obviously I, I can't come up with a word to quite sum up what it is about replicating reality that makes me want to consider it as art and that really makes me appreciate replicas of reality so let me know what you think of it. opinions differ that's what we're for facts don't that's what they are for and I think this is not much of a factual discussion so throw out your opinions and the second thing I wanted to talk about today was recency bias and what made me think about that was Watch Dogs 2 and Watch Dogs Legion coming out. 
and that reminded me of the need to really make good games because once you make one bad game in a series that can truly have effects is that a police car highway patrol it looks like one right maybe we shouldn't overtake or ram No, you're too slow, go away. Oh, that was expensive. We Oh, we didn't crash. Lies, fake news. <laughs> Just kidding. I wanted to do something smooth and it didn't work. Anyway. As I alluded to in a, in a earlier video, I have played the first Watch Dogs game and I did like it. It wasn't great, but it was good, in my opinion. And then, immediately after, I played the second, because I played the first one a little late, when it was already out. I picked it up on a sale, played it. And yeah, again, I enjoyed it. So I picked up the second game as well. Because, you know, I enjoyed the first, so let's pick up the second. And I played it for a bit, and I didn't really like it. And, well, then I stopped playing because why spend time on games that I don't enjoy? And recently, Watch Dogs Legion came out soon going to come out I haven't checked I'm not particularly interested and I noticed that's because I didn't like the second game so even though I like the first game and the third game could be just as good as the first obviously I mean it's still the same series I haven't picked it up and I don't even follow and my interest just isn't there because well the second game I just didn't like it so my thinking was okay well maybe I just didn't like it because I just played the first game and at some point it's just too much of one type of game so I just the game maybe was good but I just had enough of that type of game for the moment that happened with I think it was Assassin's Creed where I played Origins right before Odyssey came out and obviously Origins takes a ton of time to get on Platinum and well then I just had enough of playing Assassin's Creed for, for a while so I put down Odyssey for a while and picked it up later and played it again and then it was fine I mean, oh that we overshoot that as well we're racing too much. Anyway. Um, oh, we could have gone straight on. Look. Uh -huh. oh, well. My thinking was... Maybe that's the same with Watch Dogs 2 as well. So, I put the disc in again. Yeah, I bought that on a disc, you know, like like a person from, from yesteryear. And like I said, I put the disc in again and I installed it. I'm not speeding, barely. Leave me alone. And I played Watch Dogs 2 again. And I'm still not a fan of it. I might complete it this time because I don't know. I feel like at least giving it a little bit more of a chance, but I'm still not enjoying it. And 
that really ruins my interest in the next game. Because the most recent game in the series, I just didn't like it very much. And that really shows how we focus on the most recent things instead of a track record over a longer period. Because it's not like I picked up Watch Dogs 2 for no reason. I mean, I enjoyed the first game a lot. So you would think, well, I picked up a second game. Okay, that wasn't so good, but maybe we return back to the roots, you know. But no, I just I don't pick it up. I might pick it up eventually when it's on a sale, but just because the second game was, in my opinion, not very good, really that stops me from buying the third game at full price. And at the same time, when you flip it around and a recent game in a series was good, you'll probably just pre-order the next one. Regardless of whether it's going to be good or something. The previous game was good, so, you know, you're longing for the next one. Kind of like what, what, what happened with Doom. I mean, the 2016 game, I think it was. That was really good. So obviously I immediately bought Doom Eternal when it came out. That's kind of, hey, the, the previous game was good or not good, and that immediately impacts my opinion of the next game. Although that might not really be justified. Something interesting I see is that this behavior does not apply to people playing Call of Duty. <laughs> because they've been saying the last good one was Call of Duty 4 since well, ever since Modern Warfare 2 came out. Or technically ever since World at War came out, since that was even before Modern Warfare 2. And people keep buying it every year, saying, I hope it's going to be as good as Call of Duty 4 again, and I hope they go back to their roots. And the entire track record in between doesn't seem to matter. Like, that they keep raging about the game every year. And keep saying, well, maybe the next one will go back to the roots. Like, all that doesn't seem to matter to them. I don't get it. Although I think right now it's just a common habit to bash Call of Duty and complain about it. Because, I mean, they are functionally alright. There are functional shooters. I mean, you know what you get. And, I don't know. There's really not much to say you know what you get. You get guns and you shoot at the other guys. And it's all about speed and positioning. And, well, you die fast. Guns do a lot of damage. Snipers are going to annoy the hell out of you by one-shotting you. I mean... <laughs> You know what you get, I didn't play the latest one, but I'm 100% certain that that's what you're going to get. I don't even know what the last one was that I played. World War II? I think so. I know I bought it. Because I wanted to play the campaign and it was just... Well, it was the regular American heroism thing. <laughs> Which really is every campaign so hey look we're America we're killing the evil guys and, you know that's just it was what you all what you always get it was nothing special or anything but it was like again it was what you always get go away So yeah, not that much to, to say about that. And it's the same with... Well, maybe not the same with Assassin's Creed, actually. Because if you think about it... That series has actually changed quite a bit over time. You knew it at some point, like when Assassin's Creed 2 came out. And then Brotherhood came out, which was basically just a DLC, but charged at 
higher price. <laughs> then what was we have a revelations? Last one with Ezio. That was like more of the same. And then they did more of the same just at a different place in AC3. And really the first time they did something a little bit new was Black Flag with the boat. Which a lot of people enjoyed. A lot of people enjoyed Black Flag. And then they ditched that and did more of Assassin's Creed 3 and whatever the other games were. Unity and, and what was the other one called? See, I already forgot. They all blended and meshed together to create some kind of Assassin's Creed universe thing all the games mesh together and we're all just one big pile of go here stab that guy and do 10 follow missions in between and make big screens about diversity and, and, and I don't know Assassin's Creed seemed to turn to more of hey look we now let you play as a woman instead of focusing on the actual gameplay I mean, I don't mind that you can pick your character. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just like that was all everyone talked about. Like because everyone already knew it's do ten follow missions and then stab one guy. And then if you get into combat, you either drag yourself through horribly programmed combat or well, you die. But the recent ones where I've kind of changed the formula, making to kind of an open world thing. And I think they just go down that path. I mean, the, the latest the Valhalla game is probably best played if you treat it as an MMO, just without the actual MMO part. So they just keep going down that line now. I think they diverted from the original formula to get a new formula, and now they copy that all the time. So, I don't know. It was especially blatant with Odyssey and Origins, which was basically the same game, just somewhere else. Like, literally. I changed the menus a little bit around and put you on a different map, but that's really it. But hey, if people enjoyed it, give them more of the same. I mean, it works. So. Obviously, why not do it if it works? And it's not a bad thing. I mean, if I enjoyed something, I obviously want to play more of that. So it's just that sometimes fresh ideas are pretty good. And the problem here is you can't really listen to people because people want what they already know. So if you listen to what people want, you're always going to get the same things and not much progress because <clears throat> the true art is to make people want your thing. To design a thing that makes people go, oh yes, that's great, I do want that. Because people don't know yet what they want. So give people something which they didn't know they want. Like, do you think people in 1900 knew that they all want a car one day? No, they didn't. They also didn't know they want a phone. So you must create something that makes people go, I want that. Even though they don't know that yet. So if you just always ask people what they want, they're going to answer with something that already exists. So you're always going to be stuck with the same things. That makes sense. I think so. I think we already are drifting into a third topic, which I don't even know how to call it. That was a bum. I think the third part is rambling on. We're not going to do the entire delivery, by the way. I mean, it's a pretty far one. I thought about including different games in the series still, even though I called it Trucking and Stories, I think. I'm going to do one last thing before we end up for today and that's why didn't I enjoy 
Watch Dogs 2. I mean, we've been talking about it, but I didn't give my actual opinion of why I didn't like it. And there were two things I don't felt, or I didn't feel like um, the game particularly involved me in, in it. Like, it was just here's a map and you do things. Which really has been an issue with multitude of Ubisoft games lately they just give you a giant ass map and say here have fun with it and secondly the things they do try to involve you in are just it feels like it's be or it was made by people that have heard of the modern world in a TV documentary about social media and the modern world made by people that don't use any social media or have any sort of connection to it because you you hear all these buzzwords and it just it seems so forced in a way that means I've seen that in several games where your objective is now to gain followers and everything has to be an app and it's just in a way a lot of it is I mean Watch Dogs obviously lends itself to it because what's well, about hacking so that lends itself to it but it still feels like it's done by people that have only heard about hacking and social media and followers and all that like in, in the news made by people that have never even had an account for anything in the social media realm or I don't know it's it just feels so forced and so out of touch with, with what's actually going on anywhere kind of weird well the concept itself wasn't bad obviously I mean getting followers to download the app and then using their phones as kind of remote power to, to kind of be able to, to hack into something yeah, the idea wasn't bad in itself but just the tone of the game the way it was done it, it still reminded me of like an 80 year old priest going on tv and talking about how video games ruin everyone despite having never played one or seen one or even touched one with a 10 foot pole so i don't know maybe that's just me the gameplay was is solid, but it's just you have a huge map with things to do that aren't particularly interesting and robbing money from people and beating them and dragging them out of their car is only fun for so long, so I don't know. Maybe I'll be more invested this time playing it, but so far I'll give an update when, when anything changes, like when, when I start being invested in it and say, okay, I've been wrong all along, this game is amazing, then I'll update you and say, okay, I do find it amazing, but so far, not a big fan. Big fan of Spider-Man, though. If it ever goes on a sale, pick that up. Also the first one, it's also pretty good. Anything else? Have I played anything else recently? Don't think so. I've been playing Civilization 5 a bit. That was fun. I could do that in this series. That's also something I don't want to record in a serious manner. So maybe that suits itself to kind of a talking series. Yeah, I think that's it for today. I think we'll check back with a 
another topic next time. I don't think we have a time now to continue this into another topic. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and until next time. With probably another delivery still or maybe in civilization then. Farewell.